Hello and welcome to Delta Cast Tutorials. My name is Carl Lindsay, and I'll be doing a short arm cast using the functional cast technique or FCT. Let's just position the patient and make sure that the wrist is extended to about 15 degrees. At the end, of course, trying to make sure I can get really good full range of motion and I'll make sure I put it proximal enough so that the patient can bend their arm freely. For my application, I'll first apply my Delta Terry Net Thumb Spica Stockinette, which is already made for most short arm type applications. I'm just sliding it on gently and ensuring that it covers enough of the extremity that is needed. I'm just checking for range of motion again that I would want for this application. I'm choosing the radial aspect for the cutting zip stick, also noting that the zip cutting strip can be placed on the dorsal aspect as well. So I'll just go ahead and do a small little cut here. Very small, not to overexpose the skin to cast tape. Then insert the zip stick. So again, position the patient and slide the zip stick. And one pearl, as a reminder, is after the cast tape is applied, reposition the zip stick to ensure it is in the right place. I will be adding Terry Net adhesive foam to the bony prominences. At minimal, the ulnar styloid, maybe the pisiform, and the radial styloid area, or any place that you feel needs extra padding. This is to ensure the cast does not rub sensitive areas and provides comfort. So take off the adhesive backing and place it on the extremity gently. Perfect shapes are not necessary, just enough to cover the specific area. I'm putting some padding in the web space or thinner aspect and just ensuring everything is in the right place here. I'm using some Delta Cast conformable cast tape that comes in several width sizes. What's nice is the cast tape has a nice three-way stretch to conform around the extremity easy. Just go ahead and make sure you applied some gloves on because the resin will stain your hands. Again, reposition the patient. Open up your roll of cast tape and first thing is make your rigidity layers. Let the patient know that it will feel warm for several minutes. Start with at least two, three, or four rigidity cast fan folded layers, depending on how big the extremity and strength needed. For example, a wrist, elbow, or knee on a pediatric versus an average sized adult. Noting that you're going to only wrap circumferentially twice or 50% overlap as you apply the roll. I'm using a three inch roll while some prefer two inch width. I'm making a half moon cut for easier trimming around the thumb. Soak the roll three to four seconds and ensure the fan folded layers are laid smooth prior to applying the roll. So I'm just making sure I have saturated the roll of cast tape at least three to four seconds. If you need more time to apply, do not squeeze out as much water or just don't wet or activate the fan folded layers, just the roll itself. Start applying at the distal end ensuring you make at least two full layers where the cast will start and end after being trimmed. I decided to go through one more pass for better coverage on the dorsal side.
As I'm applying on the forearm, I'm using the 50-50 coverage method. And you can see that it's at least two layers as you go more proximal down, like the cylinder portion of the extremity, and just try to make sure you're at least two layers where you want the splint or cast to stop. Now laminate the extremity, meaning push all those layers together, rubbing perpendicular. And as I said earlier, you want to reposition your zip stick so that it's at the position that you want. Ensure the wrist is positioned at extension or as needed per the diagnosis. Support the wrist with one hand and laminate with the other, as most patients will likely be in an acute stage. Laminate for three to five seconds and switch to allow the splint to contour to other areas. So it's important that you laminate really well to press those multiple layers together to ensure it's strong. Mark where you want to cut it. The markings make it a little bit easier for conservative cutting, especially on patients with acute pain since you will have to ensure the best range of motion needed. They might have done and doffed the splint a few times. Here are the basics. Palmer area will be angled more proximal on the pinky side draw a teardrop around the thumb. Draw where your split will end proximally. Expose the metacarpal heads as needed. Hold the extremity and start cutting on top of the zip cutting strip. Start on either end, but use your alternate hand to squeeze and bow the cast to increase more room for the scissors to cut more easily. Gently remove the zip stick, remove the cast off the extremity, and start trimming unneeded material. Go ahead and remove about a quarter of an inch where the zip stick was to ensure that the cast does not pinch the patient's extremity. Curve the proximal ends for a nice finish. At the distal end, start cutting on the sides. While trimming around the web space area, another little pearl, ensure that it's no wider than an index finger or half an inch in that area on an average sized adult patient's hand. Of course, on pediatrics, the area should be more narrow. Ultimately, the goal is to ensure full range of motion for the opposing index finger and thumb.
Again, on the distal palmar crease side, ensure that it has an oblique downward angle exposure on the fifth pinky finger end. Go ahead and size it again by applying it on the patient. Just ensure you have the best fit possible. Trim more if necessary. Go ahead and apply your terry net hook to the trimmed ends. Curve the ends of the hook to decrease roll up. Try not to touch so much of the adhesive backing. The oils from our fingers reduces the tackiness of the adhesive. Another pearl is to use a heating gun to the adhesive to stick on the cast tape material even better. Cut as many hook straps as needed. you can use a one or two inch hook. Ensure the cast is dry to the touch prior to applying the hook for best adherence to the cast material. Add the fleece edger by laying half of the width on the outside and half on the inside. Use one long strip or increments of six inches to make it easier for application, especially around the rim or the more curved areas. I prefer to start on the straight areas of the cast when first applying the fleece edger then the curved areas. You'll develop your preference. Lay all this down and then lay down the more curved areas last to decrease wrinkles. Cut off the adhesive paper when done. Use your scissors to cut flush any edger sticking up or not laying flat. Go ahead and pinch those and cut off excess. Sometimes it's easier to cut petals around the fleece edger to apply on the really curved areas of the cast. It makes it a little bit easier. Fit on the patient again to ensure the adhesive is laying flat inside the cast and then apply your loop.
check the range of motion desired at the distal palmar crease and thumb. What I'm displaying for you here is the semi-rigid feel of the splint and that's what we're going for. You want rigid in the injury areas and semi-rigid elsewhere so that the patient can don the functional cast easy. Trim the loop strap shorter when finished. This was the short arm using the functional cast therapy technique. Thank you.